When I make these videos sometimes, I'll see comments on how I make them. So I'm gonna share the tricks that I've learned over the last year that helped me create these kind of videos. But really quick, today's sponsor is the like button. For the cost of nothing, smash that like button and we'll get started. So the first and most important is equipment. You wanna check if your piano can export a MIDI file. It's an audio file that lets you see the particles falling down later in post-edit. My digital piano has a MIDI port and when I go to my parents' house, their grand piano has a Yamaha disc clavier. That's a Yamaha grand feature that lets me export a MIDI file onto a USB. If you're using a digital piano like me, it's the same concept. You just wanna purchase a USB cable and export the MIDI file from your piano to your laptop. We then have to figure out how we're gonna record with our hands. And you could use a phone or a camera. I didn't always have a camera and I started out using my phone. This is an iPhone 8 but I used to use an iPhone 5s and what you see right now I saved up and purchased a camera. This is a Panasonic Lumix G7 and I use this pretty much to record all my videos today but I still use my phone sometimes. And now we need to recreate the overhead angle. I found this tripod on YouTube and from this video. This tripod has a ball head and allows me to point the camera downwards on the piano. I used to think that piano YouTubers would use a film crane or have really tall friends to hold their camera. No I'm just kidding. And depending on your setup and what you have already, it can be easy to just place a tripod right on top of your piano. When I'm at my parents' house, I can just place a tripod right on top of the piano. But when I use my digital, I have to get creative. I have this seat slash pull-out bed where I can just place a tripod right on top when no one's using it. And in my older videos, I've used both the digital and the grand, and no one has noticed that my setup had changed. A ball head tripod is not cheap, but if you do plan to make a lot of these videos, you do get your money back in time for setup. And fourth, here's how I separate my hands from my background. It's movie magic. That's partially true. I had a blue tarp lying around the house. I would place it underneath my piano seat while I'm recording and it was better than showing my orange carpet. The problem was you could still see the blue tarp in post edit even after cropping it. So now I have a black backdrop I purchased off of Amazon and you can get one yourself using the link in the description. You can also look around your house for something that's dark, maybe like a bed sheet or blanket and that's something what I used to do. So my more recent videos, my hands look like it's masked out with very minimal effort and I'll just do a little cropping just a little bit at the end. And fifth, we need to talk about lighting. Just don't do this. It's too dark. I don't know what I was thinking. Don't make your footage overexposed either. Just check your phone or camera settings before you record. You can always edit your colors later in post edit. I used to use window lighting and it works great. The problem is it's time sensitive and you can only record certain times during the day. For some, it can be every day at 11 in the morning or later in the day at three. You'll also want to watch out for the sun creeping in while you record. I look back at the footage and sometimes the clouds start to move halfway in the video. And of course, the sun became noticeable and I did a perfect recording and you know what? I was done. I was tired. I don't want to record it again. It was a lesson learned, but moving forward, I purchased some photography lights and this is what I'm using right now. It's pretty affordable. It came with three lights, three stands, and a few more items. Link in the description, but window lighting works just fine. Next, you want to think about how your audio sounds. Do you want your piano audio straight from your piano or from a VST? A VST is a plugin software you can use inside your DAW and a MIDI file is required. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying you need an audio editing app like FL Studio or Reaper so you can open a VST inside. You'll probably need to purchase a DAW and a VST, but you can also Google or YouTube and probably find some free versions too. But the features are limited just so you know. I used to use my phone to record the audio from my piano and here's how it sounded. But nowadays in my newer videos, I just use a VST. Here's how this sounds. So it's totally up to you and either way works. If you do purchase a VST, there are many sounds and it just depends on what you're going for. Now that we got that out of the way, onto the fun part and that is recording. You now know how to set up and create an overhead angle, you practice your song and you're ready to record. Now I plug in my USB cable to my digital piano and I attach it to my laptop. I use MIDI editor to transfer the MIDI file from my piano to my laptop when I record. There are YouTube tutorials, but I'm gonna show you what I do. I'll press on a few keys on the piano and make sure I can hear if there's any piano notes coming out from my laptop. Now that everything is set, I press record on MIDI editor and my camera and I just start playing. And once I'm done playing, I upload these files onto my laptop. Now that we have our video and audio files, we can now put the video together. I like to knock out the hardest part first and that is to work on my audio. If you recorded the audio straight from your piano, you can go to this timestamp. If you're using a VST like me, you want to open up a DAW. As you can see, I'm using Reaper. And as for my VST, I'll also be using Garrett CFX. So to start, I just want to hit options, preference, just want to make sure that I want to connect my VST inside my DAW. And once that is set, I just press OK. From there, I want to search for my MIDI file and I want to click and drag it into my DAW. 
and right there is my piano playing. I can change the settings around if I wanted to, but uh, to keep this simple, I'm just gonna use the default version. Now that my VST is connected, if I just press play on my DAW, my MIDI should be playing. And then what I like to do, and you can too, is edit your MIDI just a little bit before you upload onto YouTube. Now when I double click and I select the MIDI note, I can raise or lower the dynamic of that note. I can also add, if I just copy and paste, I can add or I can delete it if I played an incorrect note. But I try to keep editing very minimal. I do most of the leg work while I record. And it's okay to edit just a little bit, just don't overdo it. I know it's difficult to record a perfect take, but just do your best and you can try again in the next video. And when your audio sounds good, you can now export a new MIDI and a WAV file. To do so in Reaper, you click on File, you hit Render, I click on Browse for the file location. We're just gonna name this file the song name and we're gonna say new wave file. Make sure the format says wave. And from there, I'll click on render. And once that's done, I'll go back to file, export project MIDI. I pick a location. We're just gonna name this new MIDI from Reaper is basically where it is from. I'm gonna click okay. And there you go. And now I want to open a Piano Particle software. What I use is C Music. You can also check out Piano VFX and Embers 2. It just depends on how much you're willing to spend and what kind of look you're going for. So first I want to import my new MIDI, Wave, and my video footage. Video type, we're gonna hit Hands, select to Current. And now we have all our files imported in here. These are the audios that I'd be playing. We only need one. We're only gonna need the WAV file, which is the VST. My video file has been imported. If I click on video here, I just wanna move the position of my video so I can align the artificial keyboard with mine. But first I need to rotate my footage. Basically you wanna rotate your footage if you need to change the position of your X and your Y so you can align your footage with your artificial keyboard. You could use the settings inside C Music, but I'm also gonna show you inside DaVinci Resolve too. You can see I somewhat align the keys to be straight, but they're not vertically straight. These MIDI notes will not align correctly with my footage. So what you wanna do is go inside your video editor. I adjust my pitch and my yaw and so that way my piano keys are straight on so they could align with the artificial notes. I'll take a few times to edit. We're just gonna name this test. And basically I just wanna render a couple of seconds. Now I just wanna import a new video file. And once I removed all those changes I made inside C Music, it just looks so much more better. And it should align with the MIDI notes falling down. So that's good. You just want to keep making a few changes, the position of your footage or the pitch and yaw, and eventually you'll be able to align the keys perfectly on both sides of the piano. And once you have that out of the way, I'm just going to turn off the artificial keyboard and I'm just going to put it back with the MIDI. And if it looks good, I'll go back into DaVinci and I'll edit my white balance and shadows. In the color correction tab, I want to click on the eyedropper icon and click on the white keys. And from there, if I go to number two, I can change the temperature of my keys. I wanna pick something that looks natural and white to me. And right here, this looks good to me. I'll also wanna change the shadows, maybe make the keys look a little bit darker, or I could add highlights to it, or I could brighten my footage if I wanted to. Now that I have my white balance and shadows the way I want it, I'm just gonna add a little bit of saturation just for a little color in my hands. Just a little saturation and that looks good. Right about there looks good. You don't wanna go crazy. You just don't wanna overdo it like that. And if my colors look good, I'll export a new file and I'll go back into C Music and I'll import another file. The last step here is to pick a color I like. I could go any color I want. I could add multiple colors at once or just maybe two, whatever you want. And okay, that looks pretty good to render. My MIDI is aligned with my hands as I'm playing it. And now I'm just gonna export it. I'm just gonna export 30 seconds of this video just for demonstration. 
This may take some time depending on how long your video, but for me, I'm just rendering about 30 seconds. And once that's saved, I'm just gonna open up the file and make sure that the video is okay. So here's my video file. I'm just gonna speed through it. Just make sure my video isn't choppy. You can listen to the audio, make sure everything's okay. And if everything looks good, we'll put our final touches. Going back into DaVinci, I'm gonna import my C music footage that I just rendered. I'm also going to throw in a watermark so people know that it's my video. Okay, I have my watermark. From there, I'm just gonna import my C music. I'm gonna place my watermark right on top. And because I've done this many times, I save the inputs on my phone so I could just import them really quickly. I'm just gonna drag it all the way in my timeline. And throughout the video, now you can see my watermark. My watermark is right on top of my arms and it looks a little dirty. And what I'm gonna do is crop the bottom of my video footage. After I crop a little bit, I'm just gonna soften it just so it looks a lot more natural. Now throughout the video, the watermark is not gonna be too harsh on my arms. And you can't even really see the black backdrop, so that's awesome too. You can also do whatever you want. You can create a title and add some text for the song name too. I'm gonna add some text. We're just gonna call the song name, song title. So as your video starts, I don't like the saber here, so I just like to kind of go inside my video a little bit and just use the blade tool and just remove this bit. So that way when my video starts, you can see my keyboard. And add a song title. And yeah, I can change the position of it. You know, I could put it here, move it left, right. I could add in some kind of effect, video transition. Maybe I'll just throw in some kind of fade away end card and it goes black and then I'll put my own end screen right here. Again, I'm just gonna render this, click on this custom YouTube and basically render a new file and it's ready to go for YouTube. If you have any questions or future video ideas, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.